Most of you know that we've been working for some time uh, to try to mitigate the threat of either uh, man-made induced uh, electromagnetic pulse or um, geomagnetic storm on the grid. It's one of those things where it is of cataclysmic significance. I know that everyone speaks in hyperbole when it comes to the whole EMP issue, but if, it, if you don't, you're almost not being accurate, and if you do, sometimes you're dismissed as being over, uh, overwrought over something that's not as serious as in the minds of most people as it really is. But I think we just have to, to look at it for what it is. I, I'm reminded that uh, in the 1600s, uh, I think 1620 or 60, that London had the terrible fire called the London Fire. Everybody probably has some recall of it in history somewhere. And that destroyed 90% of London. And it wasn't that they were uh, unintelligent or that they didn't know about fire. They had just entered, sort of engineered themselves into a vulnerability. And that's what we've really done with our modern day grid. Uh, we have engineered ourselves into a situation where we're much more vulnerable to EMP than we've ever been. And uh, for most of you in this room, I think you're already familiar with the, the basic issue. Um, but what I don't think is, is known is that EMP has been something we've been talking about for a long time. You know, the Soviets had a, had a 25 megaton, not kiloton, but a 25 megaton warhead that was their main arsenal to try to induce an EMP effect uh, in, the, in the event uh, that the Cold War turned hot. And uh, we knew about that then, but we had systems, vintage systems at that time that were not impervious, but certainly more resistant to it, and yet uh, they were committed to, to having this large warhead to try to detonate it exoatmospherically and to try to, to damage both our satellite and our communications and other capabilities. And they deemed it worthwhile as an important element of their arsenal. <laughs> With that said, today we're a million times more vulnerable to the extent where some enhanced uh, warhead with uh, um, additional uh, gamma ray uh, output could literally, with one or two kilotons, one or two kilotons. Now you can almost that's you can almost let that go off in your hand. No, that, it, it might hurt you. But the, the 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 point is, it's not a big bomb when you're talking about nuclear warheads, and yet it could do the same type of, of ultimate damage today as the 25 megaton warhead could have done so long ago. So. What do we see in recent moments that uh, should capture our attention? Everyone is looking at Japan. And I remember when they first had trouble there, and uh, they're having trouble with this nuclear power plant, it occurred to me that their big issue is probably not being able to have access to major amounts of electricity to run their, their water pumps to maintain the cooling mechanism in those reactors. <clears throat> and of course, that was indeed the, the case. They had. They had trouble with their diesel backup generators, and then, of course, their batteries ran down. Now, today, uh, we've got this brilliant move by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which I think is, is at least shows that they're paying a little bit of attention. But now they're going to review 104 nuclear power plants in the nation. They'll take battery backup life into account so that we can have a little longer battery backup for these nuclear power plants if we have trouble. And I laud that completely. But what it really says is that the loss of electric capability to cool these plants is of a seminal uh, nature. And uh, batteries, folks, we're talking hours at most days. With a major EMP attack or a major geomagnetic storm that could disable our entire grid for years, this is this not even rearranging the deck on the, uh, uh, the, the chairs on the deck of the Titanic. This is, this is just not paying attention. And uh, I hope that somehow we can sort of see this catalyze a greater look at the danger to our grid and how significant the ancillary uh, impact of a loss of our electric grid is. That's the thing that a lot of people think. They think, well, the loss of the grid, what's that? It's not such a big deal. It means the lights go out. But over time, uh, if you extrapolate it carefully, if you look at it carefully, the ancillary effects of losing the grid are one of the most damning scenarios that I can imagine uh, for this country. I mean, it, it is far more dangerous to lose our entire grid than to have uh, a nuclear blast in eight or ten of our major cities. And with that, you'd think, well, we need to pay attention because this represents, in my judgment, from a terrorist point of view, their most effective asymmetric weapon. This is something that they just need one warhead and the ability to, to loft it high enough in the right area over our country. Now, I know that 
Uh, all of you have heard the, the many other voices on this issue. So let me just say that the, probably the one distinctive that I can bring is that we have um, H.R. 668 called the SHIELD Act. And Mr. Kyle is helping us in the Senate, and uh, we, we have uh, a good chance of passing it here in the House. And essentially what it will do is to isolate the major transformers, both at the nuclear power plants and that are integrated throughout the 750 kV uh, lines in our, in our central, or in our corridor, our, our, our major, major grid corridor. And if that happens, if we, can, if we can mitigate that, it'll take us four or five years, not a lot of money, a couple dollars a year for the average customer at the most, uh, we can spare ourselves the worst of this disaster. I think we'll be another 30 or 40 years uh, to truly solve all the problems that EMP represents to our entire electronic-based world. But if we can maintain the ability to coal start, the ability to turn the lights back on, the ability to make sure that we don't lose the source of charging batteries in nuclear power plants, if we can do that, then we can mitigate the, the worst of the disaster. Now, I always try to, when I'm suggesting the, the implications of this, is to quote other people rather than just members of Congress. Um, but the EMP Commission, the, uh, the Department of Defense, the uh, National Academy of Sciences, NASA, the Federal Energy and Regulatory Commission, they have all come out with essentially the same thing. If a major geomagnetic storm hits this country, or in the sense this hemisphere, or if we have a major EMP attack, or just even IEMI attack, if we have some major part of that that completely breaks down our grid, we could have a loss of life in excess of 60 percent of our population. And that ought to get our attention, because this is something, you know, we would perhaps beg for hours like these that we have right now back someday. And this is not a hard thing to fix. We can fix this, but we need to do that. So my parting word to you is that uh, those of you who can, uh, if you have any influence in the system, please take a look at the SHIELD Act. That's H.R. 668. And use your influence the best you can to make sure it gets the attention that it deserves. Um, we passed what they called uh, a partial part of, the, part of it called the GRID Act uh, in the Congress last year in the House, but it got banged up in the Senate and they were arguing over the cybersecurity elements of it and we've separated them now and I think we have a decent chance of making this happen, but I just don't want it to fall by the wayside simply because we are not sufficiently concerned about it. So. Uh, with that, I, I appreciate talking to you all. If you have one or two questions, and I'm going to have to make a run for it. Okay. Uh, can we? I'm, I'm going to take this, the moderator's uh, prerogative here. There is a new caucus dealing with this issue as well. Is yes, there not? thank can you, you talk for, about for that? asking that question. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm chairing a new caucus called the EMP Caucus. We're being, trying to be as creative as we can. And um, we would love for any of you to either attend some of those caucus uh, meetings or to, uh, to bring any uh, elements of, of discussion to that for the other members of Congress, because I think that it is important to, to, to try to use it as a, as a means of uh, raising awareness and just general knowledge among the members of Congress. Also, uh, I'm uh, co-chairing the, the it was, it's, it's the summit on uh, uh, protecting our electric grid, EISS, in, in Washington. We did the first one in London here last year and we're bringing it to Washington on the 11th of April. And that would be a really good thing for you to come to. Senator Kyle is, is involved in it, and uh, it would be something that I would invite all of you to. Uh, if you don't have additional information on it, please contact my office, uh, but we're gonna be doing it here in the Capitol building, so at least the address is close. And uh, it uh, will bring people from all over the world to try to address this issue. It's interesting that Europe Boy, France is leading America in a war these days. I mean, you get, you know, it's getting pretty surreal, but Europe is actually more aware uh, of this issue even than Americans have been uh, in recent days. I mean, especially the United Kingdom is really taking a close look at this. So uh, I, I see an opportunity um, to, to, to change this situation around. And I don't often quote Shakespeare, but I'll, I'll leave you with his quote. You know. He said, there is a tide in the affairs of men which taken at the flood leads on to fortune. But omitted or delayed, all the voyage of their lives is bound in shallows and in miseries. And upon such a full sea, we now find ourselves afloat, and we must take the current when it serves or lose our venture. 
I am convinced this is a timely issue, and I'm convinced there's always a moment in the life of nearly every problem when it is big enough to be seen and still small enough to be solved. And that's where we are with the EMP threat. If we do what we should do, uh, when the inevitable comes, a geomagnetic storm, and that will happen, it is simply a matter of time, and it will almost certainly happen in the lifetime of most of us here. When it comes, if we are successful in mitigating this problem, we will have maybe very little effect from it. But we will look back and say, you know, if we didn't, hadn't done what we did when we did it, uh, the tragedy could have been almost unthinkable. So I hope that uh, that uh, that is a, a maintained sense of awareness in all of our parts. And I thank you very much. And I'm sorry to have to come in and throw it so hard and leave. But thank you. God bless you guys. So much.